December 27th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Okay. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edwards. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Knock it off! <clears throat> Very well. Apparently, the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement? Uh, very well, no opening statement. So... Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Uh -huh. I said, stop it! But right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Well, see, that's the confidence prediction. <laughs> order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It'll be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. You're right. I call my witness. My decisive witness to the stand. It's a mysterious bow shop owner. Witness. State your profession. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I am the proprietor of the restaurant of what the wet noodle at Gold Lake. Next up. And I uh, also wear boats. The nervous thing, you were in a boat kind of shop, correct? Uh, uh yeah, yup, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. It's a little bit who the short man is. Um. I'm gonna have to let it slide. I don't think it's a good idea. A second thought, I guess it doesn't really matter. Does it matter? What are you thinking, Nick? What if that old man has something to do with the DL6 incident? If we don't find out who he is, we won't be able to build a case here. Okay. Dummy. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. But I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. See, that's why I didn't ask in case something like that happened. The witness yeah. will state his name. Well, uh, I'm not really sure, yeah? What do you mean? My, uh, memory... Your Honor, witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. There you go, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we, witness? Indubitably. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight, yeah? I was in the restaurant where I ran boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yeah? When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and the man walks by my window. Hmm. Very well, I'd like to begin the cross examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. There go, no need for cross examination. Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Good, you're ready. Now. Uh, yes, you missed it, right? What are you saying? Of course, I've got to examine the witness. Hmm. Very well, you may begin. Excuse me? This is Van Karma? Three minutes okay? just passed. I see. Well, let's just take our time. You may call this seven <laughs> witness. The night of the murder. Just after midnight, you say? Oh, uh, you know, just around then. Are you sure? You ready? Sure, yeah. I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem to feel about it today. 
I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Don't, don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly, I did, eh? You see, Hmm. Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for court of law. Mr. Light, exactly what not good enough. Ah, uh, Your Honor, this part is fair. Oh, good? Don't be so hard on the little kitty boy. Please? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. Witness, please continue. Hold it. And where did that bang come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? Uh, yeah. Good. Continue. Was it someone in the boat? It was pretty far out that I couldn't see clearly, but I figured there were two men out there, yeah. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yeah, at the time that is. At the time? So you heard two gunshots, total. Uh, yeah. That's what Lala said in the testimony yesterday. Just about that? No. Oh. Not to say this again. By your window. Oh yeah, by my window, right outside the window of my little shack. And couldn't you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn safe, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. Objection, we saw this your This is a rather important girl. detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tooth, tooth, tooth. I have that feeling about this. That man was a defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. Fair. Are you sure? Uh oh. Dad! <laughs> Very certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead. He was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edwards? It was him, that Edwards boy. Ah. Uh. This sounds like a sign of evidence indeed. I see no room for this town. Come, he led me to cross the examination so he could send me up for a fall. Tiss, tiss, tiss. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quickly or this guy is going to be over. Um, uh, uh, wait and see what happens. Mm hmm. How can I leave the objection without any proof? Judge, there is no room for doubt in the way this testimony. I demand for you to clear your verdict. Hmm, the judge has lost the time. What should I do? I'll wait and see what happens. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Oops. Can you hear me, sis? Please? I messed up. Hmm. I got. I got to do, do that again. I can go through it really fast. Give me a second. I'll just left okay. take. Okay. That's just a few more of it. Except for the do 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 they really like that picture, don't they? Mm-hmm. Of the two people you can't see standing in the boat. There. Okay. I'm gonna... Okay. <laughs> Save it there. Nick, we have to do something. Can we stay quiet now? Mr. Edgeworth will be found guilty for sure. It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes will perhaps do high in expectation. Oh, but 15 isn't bad. This must be a new record. 
Enough. The witness may leave the stand. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need to put more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation in the past. What? No. <laughs> this court finds the defendant, Mr. Iris Edgeworth. Guilty. The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court in the month of the estate. That is all. The court is adjourned. The end. <laughs> What are you doing here? Listen, you, you've got to listen to me. I, I was, I was there in the park when I had the murder. I, I wouldn't say about it until yesterday. Yeah, you remember it. Remember what? Gunshot. I heard you too. Order. Right. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for a jury. One moment, Mr. Long Climber. So you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot. Last night. I was sitting here in the audience, listening to their testimony. And I realized something he said was different from what I remembered. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call as your murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. No! Those doggies are testifying. Order, order. May you have the cage, please? Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick! This is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay, then. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Get here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I would draw my previous way of guilty. No way, man, no way. Mr. Von Karman, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. witness. Court is adjourned. <laughs> that was too close. Try to keep you at the oh, edge of the seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. He's running bullets. He's wondering what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the still samurai balloon that flew in the, the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon and the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Huh? You say something right? Yeah, loud. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? <laughs> Where are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When you found the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. When I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me, I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. How unfortunate right. for you. Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? My Carmen has only ever done perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. 
that stick to a success. This is the first time we've ever had to deal with something unexpected and something as unexpected as Larry Brooks. <laughs> he has to let someone he had, hasn't even talked to testify before the court. That someone is Larry of all people. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of horse, right? That's well, right, Nick! Larry is left. No 10 minute trial this time. Well, no shit. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. You ready? Uh huh. Hmm? Yeah, I'm ready. Court is now back in session. Well, oh, please. Oh, I wasn't ready. What? Would, but I wasn't. Now testify. I'm ready. Okay. Please testify <laughs> to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24. I saw Santa Claus. Yeah, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're a last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to grab his witness. <laughs> I just hope Ed was right about this being a big break. That night I was out in the boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I would found it. So I quickly slipped the boat back in and went to the shop. Then just as I was thinking about going home I heard this bang. I looked over the lake and I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single sound, I went home. Huh, that was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. That's something something. What's wrong, right? It's Larry. I have no idea what you're going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. That is right. Alright. Something wrong, right? There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Okay, well, first of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 o'clock when I went out in the boat. By the time everything had gone home, and by that time everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you on the boat at such a late hour? Looking for something. Uh, yeah. Mr. Park, what was you looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely it was hunting for this good. That's surprisingly close to the truth in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get over with. You're not saying much anymore. Me? Yeah. No commenting. Well, I'm tired. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that happens towards the end of any recording session that I've done. I'm sure that's a trend. Around what time was that? Uh, Gotta well, find a way to keep that energy up, yo. Yes. I figured out without searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not sure. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? Yeah, People you use are. watches these days, Larry. Exactly. <laughs> Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know? Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Didn't even let Wasn't there a boat in the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, well, whoa. Well. Everything's calmed down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat on, out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of the case! No big. Hmm. So you only heard one bang, huh? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess we should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry, I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Oh. This is what he's talking about. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. About midnight in empty lake. Yes. So I have support, but that's not a contradiction. That's the one, but it's not really a contradiction. 
Where's the contradiction? Or maybe you can present it to that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sleepy. Present the parrot. Baby. I don't know. Alright, sure. <laughs> Well, she said there were two, and he said there was one, so I'm objecting to it, and there was only one. I thought he was just saying he left before there was the second one. Yeah, and he is going- I think he's going to make a point that there's a big gap between the first shot and the second. Ah, uh, right. In other okay. words, he's going to argue that what Larry heard is not what Lotto heard. Gotcha, he's- Wait a second, Larry. He's getting what? better as a lawyer. You only yeah. heard- one thing? You sure? <clears throat> That's what I said! But Miss Lada Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And your men just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention no. at all to what they said? Nope. Hear from it, please. Huh? You know something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm not a customer here. You gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Bucks, what? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, I'll tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Eh? Not sure? How, how could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the gunshot. I was uh, listening to something else. It something heard else. Hurt. My radio, dude, with my headphones. Well, you take the money shot, man. Yep. <laughs> order, order, and stop that booing. Uh, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. You, yeah, so what? That's a crime. I listen to my radio. Everyone listen to the radio. What's the big deal? Mm. Mr. Uncommon, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should we continue with the testimony? Well, well, yeah. What else would I do? Yeah. No, Your Honor, I'd like him to stop the testimony and I lose the case. Thanks. Please allow the witness to continue with testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than the lawyer that no one is lost. Yeah, Von Karma. Very well, Mr. Buck. Please give you a testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I I wouldn't have there was any other way out of this, believe me. <laughs> it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an only question on the radio, see? I was listening to a real booming line. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Don't you were listening to your radio at a high volume. Y yeah, what's the big deal? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? No. I totally believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this man witness says? What he heard is probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. Not necessarily. The DJ only talks between sounds. That doesn't mean there's not music. So he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross examine the witness, Your Honor. Well, very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe him to anyone this trade. That's faulty. <laughs> so you turned on the radio. Right. I just want to hear somebody's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't That's have said anything. Because I want to hear someone's voice. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio, that's all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was the radio set that night? 
We'll booming now. Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on at all. And also that hurts your ears. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I never that moment we were clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, you, it all came back to clear to me, you know? What did she say? Mr. Lua, this is his point of question. What possible good know what the DJ said? Indeed, Mr. Runcom has a point. A lot of questions only if you have some reason why we should care. We should care. <laughs> we should care because it's the only thing in this testimony that we can possibly use to pinpoint anything. <laughs> Your Honor, sharing is caring. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask me? Fine, very well. Mr. Bud, please test by the court. What was the radio not saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Okay. Ah. The are you sure? Shot? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Van Connor was right. I'm not sure how that helped. One can use a couple of questions about that. Who the hell? No, that was, that was important. Yeah. That, that was very important, you stupid lawyer. I'm glad I don't have you representing me. Uh. Oh. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What did I say? You look scared, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare the decently. Is something the matter, right? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said... The, the DJ said, Hey, it's almost Christmas when you heard the gunshot. Indeed, and... Almost Christmas means... It wasn't Christmas. <gasps> no. Do you realize what this means? No. That Santa was When he heard the gunshot, yet. it was still Christmas Eve! That would seem to be the case. Yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of that fact. Let's see what the time was in the photo taken when the gun triggered this much photo. 1225, 15, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day! <laughs> this is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. <coughs> Unless order, order. What does this mean? Show? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Excuse me, why do you keep calling Larry suspicious? You literally called in a man with amnesia who doesn't remember his name. Yeah. How is Larry more suspicious than that? Good point. <laughs> what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Miss Bud's claim that she heard the gunshot before me? Larry's right, man. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. I have proof. He heard that gunshot before me, not. Bro, I figured <laughs> out who the murderer is. No clue. Santa Claus. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before me. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Look at this photograph. This was taken by a witness yesterday, Miss Lada Hart, with an automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24, 1150. Oh, hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this photo. Yon. The real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by the automatic camera that we talked about yesterday. Yesterday. Camera that was set to respond to loud noises? Oh, I remember that now! <laughs> Good. <laughs> it was a loud noise and like a little tip. He's pretty incompetent too. That is why this photo got taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that it's the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshot after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. There is a fact that the camera also carried 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. 
That's really wonky. Why would this be? I have no clue. Mm -hmm. Before judge, the camera check to respond to loud noises. Yes. There's no clue for the loud noises. The detective was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed, tickling the camera. Hey, my nose is clear that night, man. Clear. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no team back now. Can you prove that the loud noise of the was indeed a gunshot? Uh, that. This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon has fired three times. When then was this last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was a shot Larry heard just before me. No way, man. Oh my god. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the that would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night in the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 50 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh, I better than that. Wait a second. Let's not separate by 25 minutes? Ah! What's, what's wrong, Nick? What is wrong, Nick? I have it! <laughs> I have it! Huh? I don't. Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Mine. Yes! We don't think that out now. We'll never, we'll never overturn it. It's just guilty, but I've got the hunt. I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten the guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. Just watch. Let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right. Yeah. <coughs> you yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has saved this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tish, tish, tish. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mark Edwards himself. No. Nah. Wrong one, Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edwards who did the shooting. Listen, listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and say the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This is shown by the witness photograph. The defendant, Edward, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit it, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes the victim was shot at 50 minutes after midnight. Oh, what do you mean by that? Very good question, Judge. We have photographic evidence <laughs> of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 12 0, 0, 15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot in the lake. That's the only way that Ed could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are oh, you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Oh, they are Ed Wilson Hammond. My eyes are Robert Hammond. Yes, I believe you are right. That is exactly what happened in the court this whole time. You're agreeing with me, and yet, what did you say? That Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before the shot in the boat? Yes, that's what I said. I was just testing you, Von Karma. Mr. Wright. Your client could already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you for this foolishness. Sorry. Oh, that's again. This is the man the boat are. Uh. Edgeworth and the murderer? Edgeworth and the murderer? Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. I'm not following you. What? Are you serious? Yes. I don't follow your logic. <laughs> I don't follow your logic, man. Why do you, why does some, why does someone as idiotic and stupid as you has suddenly have lapses in his stupidity where it becomes mad genius level? Because magic. <laughs> or your magic. Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond caught Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. 
That's why I didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! Let's do that. Let's name the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right, it's... Uh... Not a heart! Miles Edgeworth. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> I'm... You don't know. But again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The mood was is a caretaker of the bookshop, that old man. At 11.50, he was ordered to kill Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the bookshop? Where did what? Where? Why? What? Why would he have to go all the way out of the lake just to shoot someone? As a kid, the real in this guy was not on a boat! What? Well then, where did the movie take place? Well, that's easy. <laughs> in Lada's... Yeah, in Lada's van! Lada's van! Here, of course. The boat shop. Where he lives. That way, he could meet with them without anyone seeing. <coughs> you will prove that the boat shop was the scene of the crime. Call Larry's testimony if you will. That's Larry, he's being weird. Mm -hmm. That night he was out on the boat, out on the lake in the boat, searching for the still samurai. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just turned the boat? The boat shot! Mr. Wright, what happened to the, uh, that night on Lord Lake? Please tell the court, from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? It really seems like you're pulling it out oh, of your butt. I am. I'm not really sure, but I think it was on the very beginning. I think it's very slow. I might be able to figure out what's going on. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hem to his shop. Uh -huh. <laughs> this was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot and Larry Hood was fired. After that, the car take, caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edward and went out in the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Ah, box up, caretaker. Of course, it was a murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edward on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't hit anyone? Details, details. No, this Mr. Wright. Like. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Uh, to create a witness? I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. He ate a witness? The murderer left his <coughs> The murderer left his pistol and fired once. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hitting the first gunshot. Next. The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Bang. The murderer jumps in the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind. Asleep, someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men of the, on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the item in the camera, of course. That's why he shot quite the attention from the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that everything else falls into place, both shop caretakers went back to the shop, they put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired at night on Gord Lake. Bailiff, bring out the witness from Bahar 4. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! This is a load of barnacles! He's in trouble. Very well, while we were waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Wright, a few questions. Okay. Mr. Wright, what's the safety see it, and... Oh, we're gonna do answer right now. This is a long time. Mr. Wright, what? You heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why'd you go to the lake at night? 
Well, like I said, it's mostly bad. Astonishing is so accurate. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the bookshop at the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he has something very important to such with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it is. Hmm. You can be that You're person. You're honest there. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I see you remain quiet. You can do it. Okay. No, you're doing it. Am I doing Bailiff or you? You are, it's the lady. Okay. The witness has disappeared. He isn't in the bow shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly! We can't allow him to get away. <laughs> my best voice yet. It's just my voice cracking over and over. Mr. Again. Ron Karma, your witness has disappeared. <laughs> A search warrant has been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these conditions. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? <laughs> One more thing. Since who is our shot caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him. And I want to know who he is. You want him, man? He wants to put him, just like take him and put him on his little a little shelf, I and want just tap. Very well, quite the tune. <laughs> Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. And Ron Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sipped it through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know how you feel. Sometimes I feel it's like us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little? Relax! I'm sorry. But I feel it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know what to do or not to tell you. Edward? No, there's still a little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Hmm. I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edward? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. You committed a memory of a murder. To be continued. To be continued. Say, all right, we are good. And that's a wrap, everybody. Leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe, and leave a comment because your words mean so much to me. And as always, guys, beautiful people, have an awesome day. Have an bye -bye. awesome day. <laughs> Peace. Bye bye. Bye.